homosexuality takes center stage at parliamentary vetting as nominee for the gender children and social protection ministry defends her liberal stance on gay rights any of your son comes home after 18 with another man and his family that they are coming to that pay dowry so that you accept that they marry what will you do in terms of that question of my son that is personal and that is private and i have a right to privacy we will hear from the man who petitioned the committee about nana oyelefe's stance on homosexuality this is Top Story with Evans Mensah. Top Story is brought to you by Bond Financial Services, your success of passion, Belaka Mineral Water, the new generation mineral water, as well as myjoyonline.com. I do not support homosexuality, but I believe their constitutionally guaranteed human rights must be protected, and I stand by that. With those words, presidential nominee for the Gender, Children and Social Protection Ministry fought back in the face of an unre unrelenting onslaught from MPs who had grave concerns about Nana Oyelitha's liberal stance on homosexuality. Well, today she came before the committee. The members of the appointments committee will have to make a decision whether to approve her nomination or not. And it will be fair to say that based on what happened today, it will largely depend on the success of her defense on the question of homosexuality. This is how she explained her position on the subject. I have not said anywhere that I will promote homosexuality. What I have said and what I have done is to protect the human rights of every body. This is what I have done. And so if I go to be it international fora, be it the village grounds of Nungwa or Shama or Bukom, I will say that I protect the human rights of everybody in Ghana. She indicated that she's a very strong Catholic. She was baptized in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church frowns on lesbianism and homosexuality. The Bible even condemns that practice. And you are a very strong practicing Catholic. You're going to go to the Ministry of Gender, Women and Children. Do you, nominee, frown on homosexuality and lesbianism? Do you? My values are shaped by what I have read in the Bible and what I know in Catholic doctrine. And what I know is showing compassion for everybody. And that is exactly what I will do. In terms of the Bible and religion, what I have read is Jesus Christ came for the poor and the voiceless. Jesus Christ embraced Zacchaeus, who was an outcast. Jesus Christ embraced the prostitute at the well. And he said finally that love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that response only succeeded in triggering a barrage of questions on the subject of homosexuality from the members of the appointments committee. She was asked to declare her stance on the subject in pretty clear terms. Listen. A hey, mother, if any of your son comes home after 18 with another man and his family, that they are coming to that pay dowry so that you accept that they marry, what will you do? In terms of that question of my son, that is personal and that is private. And I have a right to privacy. This is about my competence, my capacity, my experience and my skills to be part of a team and to be part of a team to implement gender mainstreaming and social interventions in Ghana.
I'm joined on the line now by the man whose petition formed the basis for the committee's focus on the nominee stance homosexuality, Reverend Barney Wood, spokesperson for the Concerned Clergy Association of Ghana. Thank you, sir, uh, for the time here on Top Story. Were your concerns addressed today? Yeah, please, uh, let me make a, a quick correction on my, my name is Prince Benny, Benny Wood, Bishop Prince Benny Wood. It's not Barney. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Were your concerns addressed today? Um, let me say that I, I think that the members of parliament did their best to espouse our position as uh, stated in our petition. Um, we think that they wanted to make it clear to uh, the nominee that the office you are about to take is a national office, is an office for the people of Ghana. And we are supposed to espouse the beliefs, the values, and the laws of Ghana. Um, concerning her response to the questions, we think that she was a bit contradictory. Why do you uh, say that? Why do you say that? Yeah, because I think at, at one point um, she will not come clear as to her position on homosexuality. Well, she, but 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 she that question was put to her about her contradicting herself. She was clear about that. She stated her position in clear terms, according to her, that what she said and the stands she will always defend is that the homosexuals are entitled to their fundamental human rights like yourself and myself. And that's the position she's always stood by. You see, that is, that is, a, that is, a, that is a trick a lot of people fall into. Look, look, we have never questioned the human rights of homosexuals. We have never, not once. So what, why is she responding to homo, homo, human rights issues when we have not spoken about human rights issues? What we are raising has to do with the civil rights. Civil rights are based on the laws of the land. Does the laws of Ghana permit support, propagate homosexuality? That is the question she has to answer. It's not about human rights. She, they, and that no, is the but, but, but the question to her, essentially, uh, throughout the, the proceedings today, was and about... I'm what, you what, what's you about... You are asking me about my petition. I'm telling you about my petition. Mm, my but, petition is based on civil rights, not on human rights. So are you saying, are you saying that the parliamentarians did not do justice to your petition? I'm saying that I did not go questioning civil human rights. I what? go. I went to question the attempt to uh, to decriminalize and to legalize homosexuality. True. And and, and, uh, and that's exactly the point she explained today, several times before the committee, saying that she's never said anywhere that she supports homosexuality or asked that it be it be decriminalized or legalized. My all brother, all she said. All she said. She stated today was that their rights must be respected, and she will defend that right. And I'm saying that nobody, nobody is questioning the right of homosexuals to live as human beings. What, is, what we are saying is that there is a law in Ghana which she is denying exists. If you are existing that there is there and, no and law. Which, and which law are you referring to, sir? I'm talking about Section 104. Now, which which, you, says, which you, says what? Which says what exactly? Section 104 talks about uh, having on canal knowledge. And I'm telling you that, listen, listen to me, let me finish one, one statement and you will understand. Listen, what I'm saying is that if there is a law and you say there is no law, you make the act legal. That is the point she's pushing and we must see through the trick she's playing. She mm. wants to tell Ghanaians that there is no law against homosexuality. Well, she, no law against I, I, I'm, it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but today, if you listen to her, she acknowledged the existence of that law and it says clearly today again that as far as that law uh, indeed talks about uh, unnatural canon only, which she says is gender neutral. She respects that law, but also believes in the Constitution. But stay on the line for me. Let's speak to a member of the committee uh, who indeed also pressed very hard today, uh, Mr. Uh, Mubarak Muntaka, who again today asked a number of questions regarding this. And we played a clip of him asking a question about the children of uh, Mr. Nana Oyeleta uh, today before the committee. Thank you, sir, for all your time. Uh, did you get the answers you were seeking today when you pulled those questions to Nanoy Uh Thank you. Good evening to your listeners. Uh, let me say, unfortunately, no. I couldn't get the answer that I was expecting. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't get the answer that I want. But let me admit, Nana Oye Ileta, by every measure, 
is really, really very, very experienced. She knows what she's talking about, the confidence that she puts, she, she takes to answer her questions. I mean, the only, only worry is that, I'm sorry to say, I've sat on this appointment committee for eight years. Her answers, some of her answers were evasive. Why do you say uh, that? I wish, I wish she could have come up better. I, I'm wondering uh, though, you, if, uh, we, just, just we, a minute, if you can clarify for me, why do you say some of her answers were evasive? For example, if people ask you about your personal position on homosexuality, having made several public statements, you say it's personal to an appointment committee that is supposed to use your answers to determine yeah. whether they should recommend or not to recommend. For me, was it left okay. so much to be desired. Mm. We tried so many other ways to get this answer. As one of our colleagues said, the lawyer as she was, she was also being tactical in trying to uh, go around them. Remember, we are paid by the taxpayers. We are supposed to do this on behalf of the ordinary Ghanaian, not it's going to say you and I who may be sophisticated. And that is where I have my worry. I only pray that things turn out well. Okay, so yes. let me ask you. Let me ask you the central question. Most people, indeed, uh, will ask this question of you. Uh, I know you are, you don't represent the committee. You are an individual. But what will you? What will your vote be? Approve her or reject that, her? That's difficult. That's difficult for me to able to tell you because uh, we are yet to take that decision. No, but, but personally, personally. Well, on, on the evidence, on the evidence on her performance today, would you recommend that she be approved? That's what I'm saying. That I don't want to put my uh, personal opinion out here because we are yet to take a decision, and it will not be fair on my other colleagues when we have not taken decision for me to come out and say that I personally think yes or no when the collective have not decided. If we decide, and we have even let's say we have varying positions then everybody could come out and explain his or her position. But until we do that, I don't think it would be fair. It would be stampeding my colleagues in trying to say what I think. Okay, thank you, sir, for your time. That's Mohammed uh, Motaka Moborak. A final question to you, sir, uh, Reverend Wood. Same question, yeah. indeed. On the evidence of what you saw today, would you say that uh, the Noe letter should be approved by the by parliamentary committee? Well, I see. I don't understand my question, so I... I I don't know what to say. She has not answered any of the questions that um, through the MPs they, they put to her. So, so yes, so yes, so it's the first stage. We just passed the first stage. We are looking at the second and the third stages, and then we'll see what to do. Okay, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank also you. here on Top Story, uh, that's uh, uh, the the Reverend uh, Barney Wood, who indeed uh, sent in a petition there. Uh, asking uh, Parliament to raise a number of questions regarding the subject of homosexuality. Indeed, that came up today, and uh, she tried to answer the question. You just heard the member of that committee say uh, he is not satisfied with the answers that he got to the questions that he asked. We want to join us again in 15 minutes because there are other angles to this that we will be exploring. For example, the nominee said she's not a member of the NDC, and a member of the committee questioned that why do you want to be part of an NDC administration that you've criticized in the past. We will subject that to some scrutiny in 15 minutes. You want to join us then? My name is Evans Mensah. This has been Top Story.